Good morning. This morning we're going to show you how we prepare Belgian waffles. I've been trying to make good Belgian waffles for over 30 years. I've tried different kinds of waffle makers, electric, stove top, um, tried different kinds of uh, recipes. What I'm going to talk to you about this morning is what I've been using for about 10 years. And this works every time. I use Aunt Jemima original recipe. I used to use premix, but it turned out that premix just did not cut it. So this Aunt Jemima original recipe requires the use of milk, eggs, and oil addition to the to the mix. The waffle maker that I use, there's nothing unusual about it. It uh, it has a some kind of coating on it, but it's not a non-stick coating. They, I've owned several of these things. They look sort of black in the inside, and uh, uh, it, it it's it, it claims to be non-stick, but uh, it doesn't look like. Teflon or anything like that. The first thing that I do before beginning to make the mix is turn on the flame and start heating the the uh, waffle iron. The waffle iron has to be hot in order to keep it uh, the batter from sticking. It has to be completely heated, uniformly heated. As you can see, the flame is not that high. It's uh, like a medium flame. Um, this is the perfect size for making waffles. It takes several minutes, maybe 10 minutes, to properly heat up uh, this waffle iron and I rotate it about once every two minutes in order to make sure that uh, it's uniformly heated. Because I'm uh, single and uh, don't have uh, anybody else to cook for most of the time, I uh, alter the recipe. I, put, I use a one-half cup of, uh, of flour of the mix. I add uh, one egg, which is a little bit more concentrated than is called for in the recipe, but it all comes out the same. I use a tablespoon of, of oil, and then I add milk to get the proper consistency. pretty thin.
comes off the spoon like this and this consistency I know that it's right meanwhile I'm turning over the uh, the waffle iron every couple of minutes to make sure that it's that it's uh, uniformly heated now we're going to add the uh, the mixture to the waffle iron it's important to to spread it apart spit it around so that it's uh, it covers uniformly but not too much you don't want it to overflow this is what it should look like and immediately you close it and turn it over very important otherwise it has a tendency to um, flow out uh, and not uh, not make a uniform waffle you see this is the time it's uh, about uh, 843 when we started baking the waffle about every two minutes I uh, turn over the waffle so it bakes uh, on both sides. There's a little uh, wire thing that keeps the the waffle maker closed because, and it's very important that you have that securing the handle because otherwise the uh, the waffle mixture will raise up and it won't make contact inside the uh, the waffle maker completely. So we're turning it over about once every two minutes, and it takes a long time to make a waffle. You'd be surprised, it might take 10 minutes. But I don't uh, look at the waffle to see how it's doing until it starts smelling right. You can sort of t uh, tell when it starts to get done. And then I very carefully open it up and uh, open up the waffle just to take a peek at it open up the waffle maker to take a peek at it but very carefully because if I open it up too soon the water or the waffle will separate okay about eight minutes has passed nine minutes maybe and uh, the waffle is smelling good so we're going to take a peek at it Okay, it looks really nice. Looks like it came out pretty good. Now we're going to look at the bottom of it to see how that's going. And that comes out pretty good too. Well now we have a nice crisp waffle. really nice mmm tastes good too and look at the waffle maker nice and clean nothing stuck by the way I never use any detergent on the waffle maker uh, after removing any small pieces of, uh, uh, of waffle uh, I might rinse it in clear water let it dry and then I put it away that's about all I, that's the only maintenance that I do on it 